Hello there. Today I'm taking a break from some wine and having a look at a cognac. So this is cognac from a producer called Delamain, and this is from their Revelation collection. This is Pleiade, and this is a 1999 Grand Champagne cognac, and this has been early landed. Now Delamain are a very old cognac house, they were founded in 1824, and they're actually quite a specialist house. They don't produce a VS or a VSOP brandy, and they specialise in the Grand Champagne region of cognac. And they source their cognacs, small partner distillers in that area. Now, just a bit of disambiguation here. When we're talking about Champagne cognacs, we're talking about some of the regions of cognac and simply the word Champagne relating to an area of countryside in, in terms of a name. So the Champagne sparkling wine region is named because of its rolling countryside. Similarly, the cognac regions are named because they are rolling countryside. So there's, there's no relationship to the two other than the same derivation for their name. Now, bizarrely, Grand Champagne is actually a smaller region than Petit Champagne, a region just to the south of the town of Cognac, and it sits between the Charente River and a tributary of the Charente called the Ne. And the soil types here are chalky topsoils over limestone and sandstone subsoils. The chalk here is rich in marine fossils, so lots of decomposed seashells, that sort of thing. Um, as a result, the, the, the fine soils tend to produce quite a fine nature to the wines produced here, and that flows through into the cognacs that are produced. So there's an elegance and a delicacy to these cognacs. They tend to be fruity and floral. Now the varieties used to create the base wines are just the same as you'd get elsewhere in, in cognac. So predominantly Uni Blanc. Legally it has at least 90% un comprising Uni Blanc. Other grape varieties used to a lesser extent are, are varieties such as Faux Blanche and Colombar. And there are more, but those are the two principal additional varieties. So I described this early landed. Um, sometimes, the ter sometimes you hear the term London landed. The, the, these are cognacs that, are, as young con cognacs, have been landed in the UK and aged there. And this is mimicking action of former days when, instead of being shipped in bottle, cognac would have been shipped in cask to merchants in the UK and would have aged in the merchant cellars rather than in the cellars of the cognac house. So here we have a wine produced from grapes that were harvested in 1999. It was shipped in 2000, so it may well have been distilled in 2000 as well, and aged for 21 years in cellars in the UK. The cognac was shipped and aged in a 270 litre seasoned oak cask, and the way that was created was by taking a 350 litre oak cask that had been seasoned and cutting the staves down to create a 270 litre cask. And the idea of this was that it wouldn't give a particularly strong wood influence to the end. So the brandy landed in the UK, in fact in Bristol, in the year 2000. And it was put into cellars there, they were deep, I think it was at least three floors down, and there there was a constant humidity that was above 95%, there were temperatures between 8 and 12 degrees, so a very stable but very cool temperature. So what happened was that the alcohol in, in, in the brandy fell faster than would have been the case had it had been aging in France and there was almost no evaporation whatsoever but after the period aging in Bristol the cask was moved to Liverpool where it sat in a former tea warehouse for the following 12 or so years until it was bottled in 2021 at the age of 21 years so the age of a brandy refers to the period it has spent aging before it's bottled. By the time it was bottled, the alcohol had fallen to 43.7%. Cognac has, for a brandy of this age, quite pale colour, quite subtle flavours. The other thing I should mention is that actually Cognac was returned to Delamain, based in Jeannac, in the Cognac region, for bottling. Sometimes I believe that UK landed brandies are bottled in the UK, but on this occasion, this was bottled back in France. So let's have a look at it, shall we? I mean, the colour colour is a gorgeous gold. There, almost a sort of a pale bronze. It's a, a lovely honeyed colour. Let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? Sniffing it very carefully. I'm using a, a, a whis whiskey snifter glass here. And yes, the aromas are very delicate. There's a lovely lifted note of orange, almost notes of orange blossom over the top there as well. 
there are hints, very delicate hints of wood. It makes me think of marzipan, of almonds. You know, there's a slight note of cedar there. Uh, and it's seasoned oak, so you wouldn't expect it, but maybe a little bit of vanilla just coming through there. But yes, a beautifully sort of honeyed note, almost an apricotty richness to, to a bit of fruit coming through there. But it's all delicate, it's not a huge weighty brandy. There's plenty going on there. There are hints of spice, I can perhaps think of a little bit of cinnamon being picked out there. Perhaps a touch of ginger. Delicate and elegant. So let's have a taste. Initially that is light and quite spirity. There is these lifted notes of oranges, orange blossom, hints of tea, slight honeyed note. There are peachy notes. There, there, there is a delicate hint of, of sort of almond, marzipan, that sort of note coming from the oak from aging there. It's not a rich, very rounded or powerful style, but there's a charming delicacy and a lovely persistence of flavour. The richness, the orangey notes that I said sort of started as peach, you're starting to see more sort of ripeness to the fruit, it's almost a hint of ripe apricot, and but once you've got to the, the stage of the apricot, you're starting to see those hints of spice, the dusting of cinnamon, dusting of ginger, hints of vanilla, those sort of complexing notes. The alcohol is of course quite warming and it's covering the back palate and that's where you're seeing sort of slight cedary notes and the hint of cinnamon. But at the same time, the delicate fruit isn't being overpowered here. There's a lovely balance between the elements. Yeah, a really different, interesting and delicate example of a cognac that I think is, is showing the style that you should expect from, from Grand Champagne cognacs really quite clearly. A cognac to be sipped and contemplated, and it's certainly given me plenty to think about. I'm actually tasting this as part of the celebrations of Wine Searcher's 25th birthday this year, because the Wine Searcher website was founded in 1999. So we wanted to try some wines and spirits that originated in the same year as we did, and I think this one's doing pretty well. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you found the tasting of interest. If you've enjoyed it, please press the like button. If you're watching our videos and you want to see more of them, do please sign up and subscribe. That way you can make sure you're alerted every time we publish a new video. There will be a link in the notes below to the Wine Searcher page for this product so you can see its availability, its pricing and any more details we have on it there. If you have any friends who you think might like to see the video, feel free to share it with them. And if you have any feedback, please leave that in the box below. We'd love to hear your views on the tastings we're doing, the products we're looking at or anything else that relates to that. Most importantly, however, do please try and make some time and come and join us for another tasting again in the near future. Thanks again. Bye for now.